the great British summer is the perfect time to stalk through the picturesque valleys of Cornwall with Chris Gale in search of Robux. However, there's one thing for which the weather in Britain is known the world over, its unpredictable nature. Sunshine one minute, driving wind and rain the next, stalking here has so far proven challenging. After a rocky start, the weather has given us a brief reprieve. Enough to allow us a clear view, but even with Chris's keen eye and my experience in the field, we're constantly coming up short of sightings, with only the odd curious doe and their kids making an appearance. But even after the disappointment, we persevere, trekking on through the dense trees and undergrowth and across miles of beautiful countryside in the hopes of catching up with the bucks that are so insistent on remaining hidden. After days of patient stalking, for once, we find ourselves in the right place at the right time. A beautiful culbuck presents itself through a clearing and I make the chance count. A clean shot and a nice cold buck provides a welcome relief. But we still have one more day and this buck has raised our spirits as we set off one final time into the Cornish countryside. It's early and the morning light has yet to dissipate the shadows, offering perfect cover for our stalk through the forest. Our enthusiasm remains strong as I scan the trees for movement through my hawk endurance binos, my eyes grateful for their large objective lenses and multi-coated optics. Chris continues to lead the way, he knows these woods intimately and his highly tuned sensors scour the environment for any potential signs of Roebuck. I set up the rifle on my Vanguard B62 shooting sticks and ready the Hawk Sidewinder scope, winding back the magnification, ready in case a shot presents itself suddenly. At such close quarters, we must remain perfectly still and blend into our surroundings. This is where my Realtree camo really comes into its own. The near-perfect representation of nature breaking up your edges and its sophisticated shadow effects softening outlines. We don't want to spook the bucks and blow our chances. All that's left to do is wait. After a few moments, it's clear nothing will come our way, so we keep moving to find a better vantage point. Stalking is all about patience and waiting for the right moment, always hoping that luck is on our side. We move from place to place, stopping to call and see if we get a response, but never lingering for very long and trying to cover as much ground as possible. Yet again the forest remains silent and we move on once more, hoping for better results out in the open. As we skirt the edges of the woods, we spot a doe and a buck lounging in the shade in a neighbouring field. She's laying down now, so... We must move quickly, but quietly, if we want to get in closer. As luck would have it, they have not moved and we stalk in close along the edge of the field, just as the buck is bedding down to rest. 
We are now out in the open. Moving any closer would further expose our approach. Our best bet is to set up on the sticks in the hope we can call in the buck, or the doe, closer. Bring the doe and the buck will almost certainly follow. The call catches the doe's attention as we'd hoped, and I ready myself for the shot, knowing it's just a matter of time before the doe succumbs to her curiosity. As expected, the buck follows suit. I can immediately see that he's injured and take the shot as soon as he comes to a stop. Thank you very much. Wow. What a beautiful buck. Let's have a quick look at him. Wow. And here he is, a beautiful Cornish buck. Now, this is obviously the culmination of four days stalking. This is our final outing of the trip. We've seen some great countryside. We've had sunshine, wind, gale force, rain, and uh, everything in between. And then on the final morning, I thought we'd come out and scout a ground that, area of ground that you know you have some good bucks. And we find this uh, little two-year-old. He's got an injury on his leg, which isn't great. Uh, and he was hobbling along with that doe, but we managed to get a stalk in uh, across the bottom of the field here. We're actually trying to get a little bit closer, but as luck would have it, and it's the first time it's been with us, the doe decided she's gonna skip into the field and come towards us. A few peeps on the call, he was laying down, uh, she got very inquisitive, wondered what was going on. We were perfectly still, even though we were kind of out in the open at the corner of the field here. And as soon as she moved away from him, about 50, 60 yards, up he gets to move on after her. And then we knew we had the shot. Of course, he could have done with a little bit more time, but he's not a great buck anyway. He's a perfect cold buck to take out uh, for your management. Uh, and it's always great to have one taken out that's clearly carrying an injury. In terms of the numbers of bucks you've had, there are healthy populations around here. They just don't seem to be moving during the rut. No, it's, it's very, very quiet. You expect them to be flying around everywhere. Mm. You know, we've been calling, you even expect the cold bucks like this to come in, whether they're rutting or not, because they're inquisitive young and a bit dumb, to be fair. Well, he had absolutely no interest in the call. Nope. It was the doe that came in, as typically happens anyway. She was more inquisitive than aggressive which was interesting yeah. to see. And he just wanted to make sure that he was still there with her. And he didn't want to get out of, out of range. Yeah, so, uh, you know, numerous problems with, with his leg, as you could see, and uh, yeah, a great one for the pot. So once again, thank you very much well, indeed. Right, it's been an amazing trip and uh, we've got some work to do. So there we have it, four incredible days out hunting in the Cornish countryside. Uh, one thing's for sure, they made us work for it. Uh, these bucks, either they're pre-rut or, or mid-rut, but they just weren't responding to the call. The weather conditions for the first couple of days obviously held us up, kept the does and the bucks hunkered down. They didn't want to come out and feed on the margins. They just waited out and weathered the storm. But when the weather did pick up, that's when we started seeing movement. Once you do see them moving around, that's when you get confident. That's when you, you get a skip in your stride. You, you're willing to put them hard miles in. You're willing to put the extra hours in. And ultimately, it pays off. Now there are big bucks here. We know that, we've seen them on trail cameras and they've been glassing them for weeks, but they're big for a reason and they just weren't showing themselves. However, we did get two really nice cold bucks, uh, perfect to take out, great management animals, particularly the last one, which had a wound on its leg and on the underside of its belly uh, from skipping over barbed wire. So while it's great to be out here chasing the big bucks, we've still got responsibility to make sure that those cold bucks, those weaker animals are taken out, allowing the stronger animals to come through and repopulate the gene pool. But it's been an amazing experience. Chris has been great. He's put so much time and so much effort and you can tell he's passionate about his countryside and his deer. Will it be the last time? Certainly not. There's a huge amount of countryside here to cover, huge amount of different game species. It really is a hunter's paradise down here in Cornwall. But for now, our journey has come to an end, uh, but we very much look forward to coming back sometime again in the future.